Ralph Glidden has a rather interesting story to tell, a story which he continued to tell from the grave. While digging on Catalina Island in the Gulf of California between 1919 and 1928, he found, according to him and numerous newspaper articles from the time, numerous skeletons. But what made his claims particularly interesting, however, was the claim that their average height was around 7 to 9 feet. The question arrived at by all those who have heavily researched his story is, where are these skeletons today? Could it really have just been a publicity stunt? Or did Glidden actually somehow find the remains of a lost race of giants? Santa Catalina Island, also just known as Catalina Island, is one of the Channel Islands off the coast of California in USA. The Channel Islands holds the title as the location of the earliest evidence for seafaring in the Americas, and also the earliest evidence of humans in North America. Ralph Glidden, who worked on the islands for several decades, was an amateur archaeologist who successfully uncovered ancient burial sites on Catalina Island. From 1919 to 1928, it is said that he excavated more than 800 grave sites from about 100 individual locations around the island. In addition to finding thousands of artifacts, he also stated that he dug up almost 4,000 human skeletons, a claim which has often received a lot of negative attention, many claiming he lacked respect for the dead. However, his reasoning was quite profound. He claimed that there once lived an advanced ancient race of tall, fair-haired Indians on Catalina Island and the adjacent islands. With the male adults around 7 feet in height, Glidden lost his sponsor after digging for almost 10 years, and the general opinion today is that he was just bluffing about finding giant skeletons, with the motive of creating interest and making money. However, he never made much money from his finds and received little financial attention. Additionally, Ralph Glidden was not the first to find a giant skeleton on Catalina Island. According to Pittsburgh Press, July 20, 1913, and also the Daily Telegraph on July 26, a German naturalist named Dr. A. W. Furstenon uncovered an 8-foot skeleton on the island. The skeleton was found with artifacts such as mortars, pestles, and arrowheads, all different from the ordinary Indian burials, plus a strange flat stone bearing unknown symbols. Furstenan had, while in Mexico, heard the legend regarding the noble race of giants that had once lived on Catalina Island, long before the white man had arrived. He would find the skeleton along Avalon Bay, in black hard sand, yet, alas, the remains have since vanished. All over the islands, there are countless reports. According to several newspaper articles, Santa Rosa Island was the site of a dig in 1959, where they discovered several skeletons more than 7 feet tall. The tops of the skulls were painted red, and the skulls were described as having sloped foreheads. On San Nicolas Island west of Catalina in 1897, a party of relic hunters stayed three weeks on the barren island, and Newark Daily Advocate would subsequently tell of them finding bones of a giant race on San Nicolas Island. Whether these bones finally made it into private collections is unknown. In 1930, Glidden was ready to sell his collection, including his whole series of secrets regarding the island. In return, he requested an annual annuity for life, funding for five expeditions, and the necessary financing for various planned publications that included a large monograph chronicling all of his excavations. But it seems, sadly, regardless of Glidden's confidence, nobody wanted to buy his miraculous finds, and in 1962, at the age of 81 years old, he sold his collection for a mere $5,000. Just six years later, Glidden died. However, in March 2012, an unlabeled box was discovered resting deep within the Catalina Island Museum archives. In this box was Glidden's collection of secret records, among which was, most importantly, a series of unique photographs showing Ralph Glidden indeed excavating one of his authentic, giant, and very ancient skeletons. There are many ancient relics strewn across our planet, which are unimaginably ancient. Hidden from inquisitive minds, often by a variety of factors, millennia of undergrowth, conspiratorial bodies, or even personal perceptions of historical truth. 
However, there lay a far more interesting, far more inspiring tale, resting just beneath the surface of this illusion, just waiting to flourish. Previously, we covered some of the amazing discoveries made by a man known as Professor Potini. In particular, his extremely peculiar stone found in 1990 within a diamond mine in Sierra Leone within West Africa. It is known as the Sky Stone. Numerous specialists have analyzed the stone and concluded that it is somehow made of pure oxygen, with a color source which is, as yet, unknown. Unbeknownst to many, however, is that Professor Angelo Pitoni had many strings to his bow. He was a geologist, a botanist, discoverer of emerald mines, an expert in the precious stone lapis lazuli, along with many other talents. And although many perceive his sky stone as a defining discovery, we feel his actual defining discovery, his legacy left upon the unexplained mystery history of our planet, can be found elsewhere. He did in fact, during his lifetime of exploration, indeed discover something unique upon our planet. Something undoubtedly important, immensely ancient, and quite possibly, a last remaining remnant of an unimaginably old civilization which was once found upon the African continent. Found during his ventures deep within Sierra Leone, West Africa. The Lady of Mali. He examined the land at the foot of her mountainous form, and according to his calculations, the stone monument was indeed man-made and carved well over 12,000 years ago. Reaching an astonishing 1,500 meters in the air, it is an image of a woman's figure hewn from an entire face of Mount Lore. Predictably, due to modern academia and the entrenched, paradynamically cast spell, Upon many modern fields of study, the only explanation that can be ascertained for this clearly man-made, highly ancient artwork is that it is merely a coincidental, natural formation. In an interview with journalist Carmen Mikado, Pitoni explained that the statue is located to the north of the city of Conakry and close to the country's border with Mali. The geologist estimates the Lady of Mali to be some 20,000 years old. This concluded through the observations of displaced motions within a natural rock fall he found within the lady's form. He also spoke of caves in the area, which contained mummies, guarded by the locals, who he claimed rumored of their, quote, Atlantean origins. Unfortunately, Professor Potini died in 2009, so any other invaluable information he may have acquired regarding the area went to the grave with him. However, the Lady of Mali remains and will undoubtedly live on for many years to come. Just who could have built the Lady of Mali? Is she really a 12,000-year-old relic, left by a pre-flood, pre-cataclysmic civilization, or merely a natural formation? Do you believe an opinion based on a historical assumption? Or one based upon explorations, investigations, resulting in unexplained physical artifacts. We will let you decide. Easter Island, undoubtedly one of our favorite ancient places, not only does its existence resonate with the mission of our channel, but its volumes of compelling stories, legends, and still existing ruins makes it one of the most intriguing places to explore anywhere on Earth. Not only are there legends of a magical Earth force known as Mana, having once been responsible for the as yet unexplained movement and placement of the gigantic Maui statues that can be found littering the coastlines. But there were also endless tales of astonishing bravery, often attached to feats of survival. It is believed that over its long history, several catastrophic population crashes have befallen the islanders. One in particular, according to the geology of the island, took place a very long time ago. Once covered in thick forests, dense trees fed by the fertile lands at some point within antiquity, these forests experienced extreme and rapid deforestation. It is currently not known what happened to the wood acquired, but it is possible that just like the enormous statues, and indeed the inhabitants at the time, were buried under landslides 
which occurred after the forests were felled. The island of Easter is, in fact, an entire buried treasure. The inhabitants at the time of this deforestation, and quite possibly their entire existence, was once buried under enormous landslides. These remains, possibly preserved under several meters of earth, still found upon the island. What's compelling regarding the buried remains is that they could indeed be those of the people who were once responsible for the movement of the statues. A fragment of a civilization that we have long stated is not a mere few thousand years old, but very possibly a pre-Ice Age, world-going, highly advanced civilization once capable of moving stones we are yet to explain the placements of. Could there quite possibly be perfectly preserved, highly advanced ancient ruins buried under many meters of earth all over the extremely remote Easter Islands? Furthermore, could there actually be existing evidence, or possibly, the lost technology responsible for moving such stones still within the reach of being publicly exposed and out of the reach of conspiratorial powers who would, if capable of such a task, excavate such sites and hide away these controversial features? What's buried on Easter Island? Could it ironically turn out to actually be a metaphysical Easter egg? A valuable jewel in the crown of alternative antiquarian researchers the world over? Easter Island is undoubtedly an incredible place and one which still has much to show the world regarding our past. It's an amazing thought that a tiny place thousands of miles out within the ocean could hold an ancient secret capable of affecting all of us. There are many unexplained ancient mysteries upon the small and unimaginably remote Easter Island within Polynesia. Guarded by a barrier of sea some thousand miles in span on all sides, thus we have often postulated that anyone who found the island without sophisticated global navigational techniques, any soul lost at sea, would have been extremely lucky to land on its shores, but in a bittersweet twist of fate, would have known they would never see their homelands again. We feel the evidence present on the island for a now lost civilization is all but overwhelming, not only for the impressive and rather intimidating moai which litter its shores, each created out of many tons of solid stone, yet somehow, at some time in the very distant past, were moved to their current resting places, a mystery as large as the construction of the pyramids, it has baffled all that have tried to explain them. Yet there also exists a series of texts, just as enigmatic and, so far, undeciphered. Known as Rongo Rongo, not only have many of the surviving texts been lost, stolen or destroyed over the centuries, but even the official hypothesis put forward, we feel, oozes with deception techniques. Quote, Several scholars have suggested that Rongo Rongo may have been an invention inspired by the Spanish visit in 1770, via the signing of the Treaty of Annexation. As circumstantial evidence, they note that no explorer reported the script prior to Eugene Erod in 1864, and are of the opinion that the marks which the chiefs signed the Spanish treaty resembled Rongo Rongo. The hypothesis of these researchers is that the concept of writing had been conveyed in a process anthropologists term transcultural diffusion, which then inspired the islanders to invent their own system of writing. If this is the case, then Rongo Rongo emerged, flourished, fell into oblivion, and was all but forgotten within a span of less than a hundred years." End quote. We do, of course, have our own hypothesis. We feel that these writings were present prior to 1770, and that we can prove it. The woods used came from many places all over the world, not just from native trees. A number of the surviving tablets were made from an old shipwreck, suggesting that the wood upon the island had all but ran out when these astonishing texts were created. This to us suggests they were hastily made in an attempt to preserve the island's secret knowledge, knowledge possibly covered up after it was realized what many of these tablets detailed. For it is known that ancient citizens of the island even wore wood clothing, 
The importance of this material to the ancient dwellers there is undeniable. Yet all these writings were made upon surviving scraps, driftwoods, and wrecks upon the island, a very rare event indeed. Yet by the time these tablets were documented in the 1800s, no importance to the writings were displayed by any inhabitants, some tablets even reportedly being used to fashion a driftwood canoe. Additionally, why would these islanders have gone to such lengths with shark teeth to create a random sequence of patterns upon driftwood? Why would they not have known of writing? There would have been outsiders landing on the island periodically over the ages, not forgetting the other unexplained enigmas on the island. We feel our hypothesis more fitting of the evidence at hand. Only time will tell who were closer to the mark. What was Rongo Rongo? What do these tablets really detail? It is a mystery which we find highly compelling. Easter Island. One of the most remote places on Earth, and undoubtedly one of the most amazing. Before its official discovery in the late 1700s, this speck of rock was thought to be just a legend. Shipwrecked souls from across the world lucky enough to make it there, lived out the remainder of their days in complete isolation. Resulting in the island being inhabited with a mixed race population, it was a long-held belief that it had only been inhabited for a few thousand years. However, certain talented people have discovered remarkable things upon this small landmass that says otherwise and supports native accounts of the island's vast history. What if I were to tell you that not only is there an ancient pyramid being hidden near the island, but that grid lines scoured into the face of Easter Island? Plot exact lines to multiple ancient sites in Egypt, including the pyramids in Giza. On the Abira party, there's a very ancient and very little known pyramid. Just what exactly is Easter Island doing with pyramids and land features which are clearly connected? Legend describes Easter Island as having once been part of a much larger country. Successive ice ages during the Pleistocene would have lowered sea level by at least 100 meters and possibly far more, making Easter Island far larger than it is today. If we can prove in the near future that there are indeed ancient ruins that litter the underwater shelf surrounding Easter Island we will for the first time in history, prove the existence of advanced civilization prior to the last ice age, some 11,000 years ago. H.F. Blandford pointed out back in 1890, quote, There is clear proof that some land areas lying within continental limits have within a comparatively recent date been submerged over a thousand fathoms. What's more, there is strong evidence to suggest land mass has recently been submerged as well, due to countless Moai statues found underwater around the island. End quote. Easter Island lies some 500 kilometers east of the crest of a submerged mountain range, called the East Pacific Rise, within the so-called Easter Fracture Zone. The island is believed to be the summit of an immense mountain formed by volcanic activity. It owes its triangular shape to three volcanoes located at its corners, Poik, Rhino Kaau, and Terivaka. In addition to these main volcanic centers there are at least 70 known subsidiary eruptive centers. The oldest lava flows have been dated at up to 3 million years old, did a large eruption literally sink a majority of the Easter Island land mass, and if so, just what kind of ancient wonders were placed upon this lost land? What was Easter Island? And what happened to it, the more we learn in regards to its specific location and secrets, the more important it seems to become. <laughs>